It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So I know it's not really the most popular of the series of videos that I've been doing lately, but this is another video in my keyboards and microphones series. Uh, I've done about eight or nine episodes in total in regards to using different microphones and having a look at how they respond. And one of the issues that is always plaguing in this space is the fact that what you record with and what you end up hearing can be very, very different. And so I've been trying to go down that path of how do we get something that you can record with that will be accurate and will truly reflect as best as possible what you're hearing. So in the previous video, in regards to all of that, I looked at comparatively the different microphones that I had in my collection at the time and uh, you know, it came out with some interesting things in that there was a lot of consistency between some of the microphones and some of them were very different uh, compared to the rest of them in what they were able to produce. And, you know, that goes to show whatever your favorite streamer is using is going to have a significant impact on what you hear and how you perceive the keyboards they are reviewing. So I continue to kick on into this space and I don't know why I didn't come across it earlier, but I came across measurement microphones, calibration microphones. And the whole point of these microphones is that they are meant to be used in a space to calibrate things like speakers, as well as to measure quality of sound signals and also to measure what you will hear in certain spaces. So if you're trying to put together a recording studio or a, an echo space, or if you're in a performance area and you want to ensure that the audience will hear it in a certain way, or if you're going to be doing a live recording, where you position your recording microphones will hear it the way you want it to hear. So I went down that journey and had a look at what these microphones were about, and they're meant to have very flat responses, which is exactly what you want, because having a flat response means it's going to pick up all of those frequencies accurately, and it won't add or take away from the sound wave frequencies that is being picked up by the microphone. And for most part, most of these measurement microphones were horrendously expensive. Very, very expensive. And you would kind of expect that simply because they have a very important role. And then I came across one microphone that was really cheap, crazy cheap. So I bought it. Now it is the Behringer ECM 8000. Uh, it's called the Ultra Linear Measurement Condenser Microphone. So now the first thing before I go and show the, the page here is this video is not sponsored by anybody. I went and bought it myself. Uh, so, you know, it's not provided by Behringer, um, nor the store that I will mention later anyway, as I go into a little bit more on this video. So this is the product page. It's the ECM 8000 Ultra Linear Measurement Condenser Microphone. It doesn't really give you a great scale of how big it is, but when you think that the end down here is actually going to plug into an XLR cable, if you're familiar with those cable sizes, it's not a very big microphone. But what really interested me was this frequency response graph, which if you have a look at it, it's super duper flat right across from 20 hertz all the way up to just before 5000 hertz. And if you remember the previous video, we talked about, you know, what our hearing in humans are sensitive to. It's around that 3000 hertz area. So what we hear and what we experience is not going to be significantly impacted by this little bit of a, a wobble, I suppose, in this 5,000 hertz upwards to the 10,000 hertz range. At least that's the way that I'm viewing it, okay? So it's very flat from 15 to 20, as they claim, despite the fact that you can see this little wobble here, it's less than five decibels, right? It does require phantom power, and thankfully my mixer provides phantom power. So we're going to have a look at the microphone just as an unboxing so we get a sense of what it is and how it can be used and I want to show and talk about the setup that I'm going to do with it and when I have opportunity to uh, I will do some recording. Now right now 
I can't do any recording because uh, they've been doing concrete cutting at the petrol station across the road and I'm just doing this while they're doing a break so that uh, you don't hear the, the concrete saws going which uh, has ruined my day spectacularly because my kids are out on a play date and I plan to do videos and that just threw it out the window. Anyway, <laughs> let's get onto the desktop quickly uh, and we can have a look at what this microphone is about. So here it is, here it is. This is, this is the ECM 8000 ultra linear and you can see it's actually really small it's quite compact now i want to give a shout out uh and once again not sponsored by them to store dj and manny's because i've bought a lot of stuff from them uh, over the years and they've also they've just looked after me really well in regards to sending stuff keeping me updated uh you know splitting the shipping without costing me more and so on and so forth so yeah thank you very much to store dj and manny's for uh your excellent service so there it is. Let's quickly pop it open. Uh, it comes in a hard shell case, I guess, which is really great for protecting it. It looks pretty cool, right? Bit nondescript, so you know, no one's going to think about what on earth you're packing. Okay, let's snap that open and look at that. Right, so we've got a bit of paper, just uh, it's got that frequency response graph that I can see here same as the web page there we go you can see that's what they talk about um, nothing on the back so the kit looks like it comes with the actual microphone itself we've got uh, a bit of foam oh, it looks like it got a bit uh, crushed but I guess that's not too big a deal and a microphone mount Fantastic. All right, so we'll pull that out. Okay, and you can see how tiny the actual pickup is, right? The, the actual condenser there is minuscule. And the reason why I say it's minuscule is compared to, say, the Rode NT-USB, the Rode 1, uh, NT-1, for example, they have a one-inch condenser. Whereas this thing looks like it's about the size of a centimeter, which I guess probably helps with them being able to maintain how flat that frequency response is. Now, my Rode NTR is a ribbon microphone, and the ribbon's actually quite long. The ribbon's probably about that long. And, you know, that obviously poses challenges, but it has a quite flat response. So I imagine if it was using, you know, a very, very delicate material that was quite thin, uh, it would probably be much more manageable in a small size like this. So from what I can tell uh, on the videos I've had a look at it, all I should be doing is just shoving this in and wiggling its way in. Oh, I don't like it, it's very tight, but uh, oh, well, I mean, it's plastic on metal, so it shouldn't scratch it up too bad. Get it in the middle so you can see it nicely there. And then, of course, that's the uh, the XLR that goes in, as I mentioned. Now, I'm not going to put that on. You know what? Actually, no, I will, simply just to protect it while I've got it out. How? This thing's not very big. It doesn't slip on nicely. You know what? I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, that's that's a bad design, I think. That particular windsock probably needs to be a little bit bigger. I think the case is actually pretty cool. It's a good size, quite handy. All right, so let's talk about setup on how I intend to use this microphone. Um, so I have these desk stands, right? These really cheap desk stands. Uh, and I've used them previously, for example, on the Solo Switch. Uh, sound tester, you know, the uh, NT-USB just screws on top of this and previously I tried to use this off on the side here to measure my Philco when I did the uh, microphones in the other series. But I had to do a balancing act because it didn't allow the microphones to hang right over the keyboard. 
So what I did was I also went and bought a telescoping little arm. Uh, so this was quite cheap. This was only $20, uh, but I did actually have to add my own adapter to the end of it because it didn't come with one. Um, and then this in itself was only, I think, 15 or $19, so quite cheap, quite affordable. Uh, so the intent here is, when I can uh, attach this, Alrighty, okay, so that's on, and then I can kind of lock that in, and then I can loosen that, and I can telescope the arm out. So what you can kind of see now is that I'm going to have the, uh, the ability to actually mount this microphone so that it's hanging off the side here on, on that side over my keyboard. So I'm going to just put this on, you know what, I need to take that out. Uh, what have I got that I can use? There we go. I could have used this in the uh, in this boom arm. Didn't even know or think about it. Okay, so I want to. Oh come on, thread, 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 thread. Don't cross thread. There we go. All right, so that'll be nice and firm, and then I can tighten that up. So it'll sit like this on the end of the arm. I will be able to move my keyboard here and then, in theory, I now can do this. Maybe? Is it too far? Oh. Okay, that's uh, not enough weight on the back end of this pole because this microphone is obviously Whoa, see, it's fallen. Um, or is it because of the legs, the three dots? Let's, let's try that. No, nope, it's still too heavy. All right, so where can it sit? All right, it'll sit about there. So I can, I can kind of maybe put it on my desk. And then uh, I'll loosen that up. And I can position this close. I can position it far. I can position it back as if it's like, you know, where my ear is, maybe. And take a bunch of different measurements uh, from different angles to see if what we hear is going to be potentially different. Or at least that's how the theory goes. Um, I have to think about what I can do to add weight to the end of this stick because I was hoping it was actually going to be able to handle more frontward weight rather than it being uh, so not able to handle forward weight. Especially because the XLR cable is actually going to be there as well, but I guess I can run and strap the back of it to the back of the pole, but I should be able to do something with the back of it to add a bit more counterweight to it. So yeah, I can get it off the desk because that was my intent. So the vibrations from typing won't travel through the actual microphone mount either. So. That is my plan. That is my plan. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do with this microphone. I just need to find time that I can do it where it's going to be nice and quiet. And then we can compare how a microphone specifically designed for measurement stacks up against the others. Uh, now, just for perspective, this microphone was $55 without shipping Australian. $55. Which is like nuts, right? It's a third of the price of the Rode NT-USB. Now, of course, you do need to add a mixer and phantom power supply if, you know, your audio interface doesn't have it, but, like, I think that's still actually a crazy price 
for something potentially that could be a standard tool for sound measurements, right, in our community and comparisons of sound samples between keyboards. So obviously there will be other things like having the same mixer because the settings on that will impact the preamps and stuff like that in the mixers in the audio interfaces will make a difference as well. But, you know, you can also deal with standardizing them too if you had to. In any case, that's it for now. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to see a video very soon on what this EMC 8000 looks like for my uh, daily driver here that I've done the other videos for. Alright, so yeah, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, please hit that like button so I know and then you can continue to uh, follow the progress on this particular path of learning and discovery on microphones. Uh, and yeah, if this is the first time you've been to the channel, please would appreciate any in engagement, like, dislike, subscribe, whatever. You know the drill. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for checking out this video. And, of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.